Hello and welcome to Polycosm. My name is Christina and we are finally continuing our work on our Knitback series. In this week's video, I'll be using Mega Scans purchased through the Quixel store to put together an in-game kind of dummy scene that Omerjohn made some concept artwork for a little while back. I'll also be creating the carriage that is meant to trail behind Nudebeck and putting together a rough lighting scene and camera animation. So yeah, let's get started! So I already touched on how to use Megascan assets in our first side quest video, so if you're curious about how the whole process works, definitely check that video out. In this video, I'll focus more on world building and how to tweak the model textures and use decals so that they all look like they kind of belong together in the same world. I'll also show how to prep the renders so that Omerjohn can paint over them in Photoshop before reprojecting them back onto the models for an extra kind of added stylized look. Oh, and by the way, you're gonna see some texture glitching, which I think is caused by the fact that I'm using the experimental alpha version of Blender. For some reason, when I import Quixel Mega Scans using the bridge software, some of the texture nodes gets mixed up. Hopefully it isn't too distracting for you guys. If any of you know what might be causing this, please let me know in the comments below because it's quite annoying. <laughs> So when approaching world building, I tend to think more about the story itself. Environments just like characters can tell really interesting stories. And even though we're seeing just a portion of the world through this like fixed camera lens, we need to kind of think about what's outside of this lens. What sort of people or creatures walk down this path? Have they hung up warnings to warn other people from entering? We know Nürbeck is sort of like a light guardian that travels down this road, lighting up his lantern to ward off harm. Our idea was that he gets hired by people to help them cross these swampy grounds and ride in a caravan supported by a lone horse. So knowing all of that, he's probably one of the few who actually set foot here, so human presence will be minimal. But there are remnants of ruins, something that once was, so maybe there used to be people living here a long time ago, but the land kind of got overrun by horrible creatures. However, Nudebeck found a way to get through here unharmed by taming some dangerous fireflies that will swarm and burn upon contact. So that's what he's carrying in his lantern, and that's what he releases if he needs to defend himself and the carriage. The fireflies, by the way, is something I'll be adding in part 9 to wrap up this whole concept. So yeah, at least that's the story we went for. Even though some of this might not be communicated through just this demo scene, it's still an important thing to keep in mind in order to keep designs interesting. If it was just an ordinary forest without much backthought, that would be such a boring scene. And Nürbeck would look slightly out of place. So with all of that in mind, as you've been seeing, I just tried to get all the assets in first, not thinking about color correcting or textures or anything, but just trying to kind of match the original concept first. Omerjohn was fairly loose with the sketch, which means I can sort of just have fun and play around with whatever I think looks best, as long as we're kind of keeping it close to the original concept. You can see that I've opened up a separate window to the right to make sure I have the isometric view open at all times, since that is how we'll be viewing the scene. In the isometric view, I want to make sure that nothing is kind of overlapping with Nürnberg, the horse or the caravan. I also try to make sure the scale isn't completely off, which can be very easy to do when you're viewing everything through an isometric lens. Which, speaking of, if you haven't heard of this add-on, there's a brilliant free add-on called Create Isocam, and you get a few isometric view options or presets to choose from. The camera will be set up automatically, and the one we went for was the Game Isocam, if I recall correctly. For the water, I used an add-on called QuickShape, developed by both Alexander Kilimnik and Jama Jurabaev, and the tool is absolutely brilliant for concept art type work in Blender. 
I'll just scroll through the page so you can kind of see some of its features, but basically you can draw shapes with it. You can block out forms super quickly, which you can then remesh and sculpt on. You can extrude and inset whatever shape you want directly onto the mesh and so on. I'm not really explaining it well. You kind of have to see it in action. You can use it for like a lot of things and I'll definitely be featuring this add-on a lot in the future. But what I specifically used for it was the initial road, which I later switched out with the decal so that part isn't very relevant and also used it for the swampy water areas. You can use a lasso tool and just draw out any shape you want and it will automatically create geometry based on that drawing. It's fantastic, definitely one of the best add-ons for Blender there is. I feel I need to apologize for all the glitching in the scene. I didn't realize this at the time, but I had set my clip start very low under the view panel, so the flat faces were sort of freaking out. If you get this type of glitching, definitely check to see if your clip start is set too low. You'll see me move things around a lot, just experimenting, trying out different things, different compositions, and so on. I wanted a nice balance throughout the entirety of the scene and not crowding any area too much, especially because Nürnberg and the carriage and everything is going to be the focal point and the environment kind of like a secondary thing, you know? In addition to Quixel Mega Scans, earlier on I used both the Sketchfab add-on, which is free, and Botanique, which does cost a bit, but is a great add-on when it comes to adding bushes, trees, plants, cacti, and so on. The link to all of the add-ons used will be in the description and pinned comment below. These are the three main workflows I use when I need to put together a scene quickly and don't have time to custom model things. If you're just getting started with world building and kit bashing, I'd say these three options are a great way to get started because you'll be somewhat limited to what you can use, so you have to work more creatively with what you've got to create something unique. I think that's sort of the sign of a good artist though, if you're somewhat limited with either your tools, assets or palette, but manage to use them in a creative way and create some cool shit out of it, you know? Anyway, enough of my blabbing. Let's stop here for a short little break while I show how I tweak the scans to my liking. A lot of the assets you can repeat, like the trees, by either scaling them in a different axis, or you can, for example, use proportional editing by pressing O and just moving things around until things look different. And if you feel the need, you can crop out areas by heading into edit mode, selecting whatever you want to delete and hit delete. <laughs> or if you want, you can hit P to separate it from the mesh and move that separate piece independently. There's a lot of flexibility with these models and it's amazing. And when it comes to importing just textures, the way you can do that is hit export in the Quixel Bridge, which is a free software by the way. And you'll now be able to use that texture on, for example, a plane by scrolling down the list of textures or by typing in the name in the search field. Let's switch gears again. At the beginning of this week, I actually worked on the caravan first, so you'll see that the scene is completely empty when I start working on it. I find it much easier to actually work on one thing at a time or else I kind of feel a bit overwhelmed. Nothing too fancy here, just good old modeling. Here I tried to follow Omerjan's concept as best as I could, but didn't want to make it too detailed as we don't want it to be more detailed than Nürnberg himself. We don't want it to compete too much, you know? I deviated from the original concept a few times just to save time and used some assets from both Quixel and Sketchfab to speed things up. I have to admit the geometry wasn't very clean and I did things really dirty. <laughs> Again, I do not intend for the caravan to be a finished model, but rather just a rough idea to sell the scene. So I'm not too worried about the mess I'm creating. As long as I can project texture onto the surfaces, that's good enough for me. For the cloth, I found this curtain thing and decided to cover the whole opening and use proportional editing by pressing O and scaling things around to fit the opening. You can see me kitbashing a bit like with the lantern and later the awning by importing the whole model through Sketchfab and only using what I needed. 
For the windows, I used both the knife tool to extrude some geometry and use that very shape with the solidify modifier to cut some holes in the entire mesh. The curtains themselves were way too high poly, so I decided to remesh them and use a smooth filter to get rid of some of that sculpt detailing. Next, I imported some quicksold textures and projected them onto the mesh by heading into edit mode, looking at the caravan straight on and hitting U for unwrap, then project from view. And honestly, that's pretty much it. Add in some lights and it's pretty much done. Final touch was to attach all of the caravan parts to an empty, attach the wheels to two rectangular empties, and keyframe the caravan to move forward and for the wheels to turn during that movement. By the way, I should probably also mention that the horse was a model we brought in from Sketchfab, because I could not be asked to model, rig, and animate a horse, so we found a brilliant model where it was already animated. This is why I love Sketchfab so much. <laughs> So yeah, with the horse and caravan out of the way, let's talk about color correcting. So when I get rid of the scene lights, you can see that it doesn't quite look like the models are matching. To fix that, we could add in either a hue saturation or RGB curves node. I wanted everything to have a brown greenish hue to it, so I adjusted the colors until they felt like they belong a bit more together. The second day I started working on the scene, I actually hated the way the main road looked. So I decided to use a Quixel decal instead. Decals are basically like textures, but come shipped with alpha maps. So you get things like roads, potholes, posters, footprints, and so on without the background. So they're basically cutouts and super versatile. For instance, you can see that there's a clear separation between swamp water and land, so what I decided to do was to actually use a blood pool decal, change the color and have that act as a sort of transition. Copy this around all of the edges of the pools and the water just felt way more integrated into the scene. I also used a ton of branch decals to imitate branches and twigs floating on top of the dirty water. I just love decals, they're fantastic and add so much detail and extra polish to a scene in my opinion. For the lighting I used an amazing add-on called Physical Starlight and Atmosphere which is fair and expensive but is so worth it. It basically simulates any daytime condition instead of having to use HDRI maps and I don't know, my scenes always look better when I use it and it saves me a lot of time as well. I also added in some atmosphere so that the environment didn't feel too sterile and to give an illusion of fog. I mean, this is a swamp area after all. Scenes like these always look much better when you have lights passing through some fog or atmosphere. It just makes it look way more cinematic. All right, after finishing the scene, it was time to start rendering. I had to make up my mind what to include as a transparent render for Omerjan to paint over in Photoshop and kind of what to leave out. I grouped a lot of the ruins, the trees, the rocks and so on together and rendered them on separate layers. Anything that overlaps will need to be on a separate layer because if we reproject the painted texture onto a rock and parts of a tree was blocking it, that tree texture will spill onto the rock, so we need to be cautious about this. Another thing I wanted to be wary of was to have the camera zoom out when rendering everything. Because the camera moves down the road, we need to render one area that covers all of the ground the camera pans over. In the end, this is a Photoshop file I ended up with. This is the full render with all of the lights to give Omerjan an idea of like what everything will look like in the end. And here are the individual layers without any light information. The reason I did that was because I want Omerjan to paint in detail without having any light information so that when I turn on the lights in the scene and Nurik's moving lantern casts light around, it'll look more correct. If this had been a still image and not an animated sequence, I would have rendered everything with the light information included and gotten rid of the lights later on when reprojecting everything. If you want to see how that method differs, definitely check out our first side quest episode where I talk about this in detail. 
If you're interested in this type of workflow anyway, I just, I'd check it out. <laughs> So that's the end of the video. Next week, Omrijan will take the Photoshop file, paint over the layers and make them more stylized looking and send them back to me for the final part of this episode. So I can like reproject the textures onto the models again. Thanks so much for watching guys. Bye.